اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Moderated Mediation is Process Macro Model 9. Model 9. Mediators and Moderator. Now in this session we are going to focus on how to test a Model 9 using his Process Macro. In this model we've got one IB, one DB, one Mediator and two Moderators that are moderating this particular effect. Now in this case there are two moderators that are moderating the indirect effect from x to y through m. In this case, for this example, I've taken two mediators, but model 9 allows up to 10 mediators operating in parallel. In this example, all variables are continuous. Now what is our sample model? In more complex models, you may have a mediation model that also has a moderator on one of the indirect effects. In this case, we've got two moderators at or rather in two of the indirect effects. Not only are you trying to determine if mediation is present, but you are also trying to see if the moderator is changing the strength of the indirect effect. Let us look at our moderation example. Now these are the two moderators that are moderating this indirect effect and this indirect effect. I've just repeated the names here and here. The moderators are the same. This is just for the sake of understanding. We are going to examine if the moderators are influencing the indirect effect. Our simple mediation test will be if collaborative culture leads to organizational performance through organizational commitment and organizational learning. Our moderators are the constructs of role ambiguity and role conflict which negatively influence the indirect relationship from collaborative culture here to organizational performance through organizational commitment and organizational learning. Now I'm interested in finding out whether this indirect effect and this indirect effect changes or the strength of these indirect effects changes with the increase and decrease of role ambiguity and role conflict. That is multiple moderated mediation paths with multiple moderators. Now, how do we do this? Again, we can do this using his process macro. Let's run it. So just remember our independent variable is collaborative culture. Dependent is organizational performance. Let's do it. Analyze regression. collaborative culture, organizational performance, or mediators are organizational commitment and organizational learning, organizational commitment, organizational learning, or moderators are role ambiguity and role conflict. And the model number is model nine. Now let's go to options. Let's say we can have our graphs as well. We want only the continuous variables that define products to be mean centered. We need low, average and high moderating values and see how whether or not the indirect effect changes with the low, average and high values of the moderator. Since we've got multiple moderators, Johnson Neiman output will not be there. Just continue, press OK. Now here are the results, just make sure you've done it correctly. Y is OP, X is CC, organizational commitment, organizational learning, role ambiguity, role conflict. Let's be sure, collaborative culture, commitment, learning, performance, role ambiguity, role conflict. Yes, now I've got all the output here on the slides. So I'm just going to use my slides to interpret all this output. Everything in here has been shifted on the slides just to make the interpretation a bit easier to understand. So your output interpretation. The first thing that you will see is this summary. Obviously make sure that you check it just to be sure that you have got the right model with the right variables. The first thing that you see is the outcome variable organizational commitment. 
Now, this is your outcome variable organizational commitment affected by collaborative culture and the interaction of these moderators with collaborative culture. Now, the model summary for the outcome variable organizational commitment is presented. Look at this first. Collaborative culture has a significant influence on organizational commitment. Here it is. In this case, is it significant? Yes, it is significant because the p-value is less than 0.05. Now next, role ambiguity, role conflict, these are the moderators and they are affecting organizational commitment. Is role ambiguity significant? Yes, it is significant because the p-value is less than 0.05. Is role conflict significant? No, role conflict does not have any influence on organizational commitment. But more than the direct impact of the moderators on this endogenous variable, my interest is in the moderating role of these variable and further later in the moderated mediation. But for now, look at this interaction. In order to do moderation, we need to create interaction term. So there are two moderators, so two interaction terms. The first interaction term, interaction one, is CC into RA. Collaborative culture multiplied by role ambiguity. Is this significant? Yes, this is significant. The interaction one, CC into RA. Is it significant? Yes, it's significant because the p-value is less than 0 0.05. This shows that role ambiguity moderates the relationship between collaborative culture and organizational commitment. What about the other interaction effect? It is insignificant. This shows that role conflict here does not moderate this particular relationship. Both role conflict and interaction two, that is CC into RC are insignificant. Now this was for this particular outcome variable. The summary was for this particular outcome variable. Later we are going to have summary for this one and this one as well. Now there are two interactions. Again, the next part of the output is CC into RA. That was your first interaction. Is this significant? Yes, it was significant because collaborative culture into role ambiguity was significant. The interaction was significant. There was a significant R square change in organizational commitment because of this interaction effect. Is the other interaction effect significant? What is the other interaction effect? Collaborative culture into role conflict. Is it significant? No. So this interaction effect does not lead to a significant change in organizational commitment, which was our first output. If we look here, look at this organizational commitment. So this first interaction causing a significant change or R square change in this particular outcome. And this second interaction does not lead to a significant change in this particular outcome in terms of R square. But overall, the interaction effect does bring a significant change in the outcome in terms of R square change. So your X variable is collaborative culture. Your W, that is your first moderator, role on ambiguity and role conflict is your second moderator. Now these are the conditional effects of the focal predictor at the values of the moderator. Now what if we've got low role ambiguity and low role conflict? The effect size that is the effect of your predictor that is what is your predictor? This is your predictor organizational commitment. Now this is your predictor collaborative culture on organizational commitment. Is it significant? Yes. At all these levels of low, medium or low average and high role ambiguity, low average and high role ambiguity, your p-value that is the effect of your independent variable collaborative culture on organizational commitment was significant. Although the moderating role was only significant for role ambiguity. So role ambiguity is the only moderator that moderates the relationship between collaborative culture and organizational commitment. Moving on, you can visualize these effects as well, although they won't make much sense because obviously this is something that you are going to get. Instead, you can use the stats tool package by James Keskin 
the link will be shared in the description or by jeremy dawson to draw out your own uh, graphs by using uh, these path coefficients i've done this previously in other videos in the basic moderating uh, videos or moderation videos i will share the link of that video as well now here is the other outcome organizational learning and same way these are the two moderators that are moderating this particular relationship again collaborative culture does have a significant impact on organizational learning role conflict here has a significant impact role ambiguity does not have a significant impact so role ambiguity and the interaction effect that is cc into ra cc into ra both are insignificant instead in this case role conflict is significant however the interaction effect in both or for both the moderators is insignificant in this case neither role ambiguity nor role conflict moderate the relationship between collaborative culture and organizational learning why because the interaction effects this is insignificant this is insignificant both interaction effects are insignificant so role ambiguity and role conflict do not moderate this particular relationship here now there are again two interactions none of them are significant so role ambiguity role conflict do not moderate the relationship from collaborative culture to organizational learning again you can visualize the effects but again i will recommend using the same approach draw your own models but in this case since the effects were insignificant there is no point probing the interaction further there is no point drawing or or doing slope analysis you only do slope analysis when the interaction term is significant and finally we've got this model here where op is being influenced by these uh, three exogenous variables are they significant yes collaborative culture is significant organizational commitment is significant but organizational learning is insignificant so organizational learning does not have any impact on organizational performance there is no interaction term here because you've got only these three exogenous variables there are no moderators in the relationships leading up to organizational performance now so collaborative culture and organizational commitment were significant and organizational learning has an insignificant impact on op now finally we need our indirect effects and moderated mediation whether the moderators are moderating the indirect effect or not now, in order to do so first let's have a look at the direct effect that is the effect of collaborative culture on the outcome of organizational performance in presence of the mediators in this case it is mediators and yes this is significant again let's look at the indirect effect at average level of role ambiguity and role conflict is it significant yes it is significant so there is a mediation is it partial mediation or full mediation it is partial mediation because the direct effect was significant so the impact of collaborative culture on organizational performance through organizational commitment is significant so there is mediation what kind of mediation partial mediation why because the direct effect is significant i'm not going to talk about the moderators for now the indirect effect of cc on op through the mediator that is oc is significant hence oc mediates the relationship between cc and op now we are going to discuss moderated mediation whether this indirect effect here changes or the strength of this indirect effect changes with the change in these moderators the last test we need to assess is if the construct of role ambiguity and role conflict is significantly moderating the indirect effect which indirect effect this indirect effect here the first one in this case is role ambiguity moderating the indirect effect yes it is moderating the indirect effect why there is no zero in between is role conflict moderating the indirect effect no it is not moderating the indirect effect why because there is a zero in between the lower level confidence interval and upper level confidence interval 
And how do you do this? Again, this is called index of moderated mediation. In this case, we have got two. So we've got a plural here, indices of partial moderated mediation. In this example, the index of moderated mediation is significant for RA, whereas it is insignificant for RC. Thus, we can conclude that the indirect effect is moderated by role ambiguity, but not by role conflict. Now, this was one indirect effect, the first one from CC to OC to OP. We've got another indirect effect as well. Now, we've got another indirect effect as well, CC to OP through OL. Is this indirect effect significant? Does OL mediate the relationship between CC and OP? Have a look here at average level of role ambiguity and role conflict. No, it does not mediate. So OL does not mediate the relationship between CC and OP. Why is that so? Because there is a zero in between. The indirect effect of CC on OP through the mediator OL is insignificant. Hence, OL does not mediate the relationship between CC and OP. Moderated mediation, again, insignificant. Neither role ambiguity nor role conflict moderate the indirect effect from CC to OP. Why? There is no zero in between. Again, in this case, both of them were insignificant. Now, how do we report it? I haven't added any values here because these are just simple direct relationships which you can get from the summary or output summary where the output is organizational commitment, organizational learning or organizational performance. Just simply copy the unstandardized coefficient and t values. I put in the values here because this is a more complex table. The indirect effect from CC to OP through OC, the indirect effect from CC to OP through OL. And you can get it from the indirect effect output. Again, index of moderated mediation. In this case, only one moderated or rather only one indirect effect was moderated, that is moderated by role ambiguity. I hope this session would have helped you understand how to perform moderated mediation in a more complex model. A more simple model was done earlier and the video will be shared in the description as well. Thank you very much.